It's our usual Q&A day, so I hope you have lots of questions for me. <clears throat> so the topic today is, where would you be right now if you knew your worth? <clears throat> That's an interesting question. I don't know if you guys have ever thought of that before. Um, hey, Vias. Hey, uh, we got Derek, unknown ball legend. Where would you be? Have you ever thought, like, well, where would I be in life right now if I knew my value, if I knew how much I was worth, if I knew what my greatness was? Hi, Nana. Hey, Christina. So, I don't know if you've ever done some soul searching on this topic. Jacqueline, thank you for the compliment. But I think, I don't know, in some ways I think it's important. And in other ways I think, man, sometimes that can cause a lot of regret. Thinking of where you could have been and what you could have done had you known your worth. Hey, Nicola. Hey, Donald. And I think it's really important Good morning, Lizzie, or good evening for you. Um, it's important to think about what we are capable of and what we could do if we knew our value and our worth. To God, to others, to society, what would you be doing right now if you fully knew you were capable of anything? Would it be different than what you're doing now? Nana says, that's true. I can relate to that so strongly. Thea says, everyone has their own path in life. You cannot compare it to anyone else's. Absolutely not. But you can compare it to who you could have been and who God wants you to be. Because he's laid out before us this wonderful path. Good morning, Orly. And uh, hi, Jordan. If, if, if we did the things that we were capable of and we did them without fear, without worrying what other people would think, we'd be in a different place right now, right? <clears throat> Unknown ball legend said, oops, let's see. Oh, I want to make an impact on people's lives. I still would do the same thing I'm doing now. Would you do it differently? Would you do it with less fear? Would you take bigger chances? Looks like Jordan says he's recovering from a bug, trying to get better. Yeah, me too. You can probably hear it in my voice a little. Yes, Eli had his second haircut. <laughs> he had his first one at three and... Had a second one a couple weeks ago. Um, hi, Kali. So I say this because I'm, um, I'm re-editing some stuff for my You Are Worthy course. And there's a section where I talked about the different roles I've had to play or the different roles I don't get to play anymore based on what I don't look like anymore or what I look like now. And um, <clears throat> as I'm going through these pictures, I'm like, Oh my goodness, look at all these, not only look at all these roles, but who is this beautiful woman? I didn't recognize myself. And when I was in those roles, taking those pictures, doing those things, I thought I was ugly, disgusting, hideous, fat, and quite frankly, I was shocked anyone gave me a role. And when you're dealing with self-worth issues, you operate on a completely different level. And I was looking back at those going, man, if I had known my worth, I would have like taken over Hollywood. <laughs> I would have not been afraid to go into any room, to have any audition, to reach for bigger things, to get a bigger agent, to try like, but I shrunk back. I pulled back because I thought, oh, I'm not good enough. And there's probably times in your life where you've 
felt not good enough to take a chance, not good enough to ask that person out, not good enough to ask that person to marry you, to, to put yourself, to really showcase your positive traits in, in your job interviews. Whatever it is, there's certain places where you've held back. You've not shined as brightly as you should have and needed to. And I could say that for myself a million times over. So where would you be right now if you had known your worth and your value? And I don't know, maybe you've heard people say this before, but when you stand before God one day, and I don't know if this is going to happen or he's going to do it, but if they, lipstick on my teeth, maybe it's just my imagination. When you stand before God one day, do I have lipstick on my teeth? You don't know. You don't even know what lipstick is. When you stand before God one day and he replays, he replays back your life. Of course, we're all going to have a lot of regrets, but they say, they say the worst day is when he plays back for you the life that you could have had, the life that you could have led had you been obedient and believed in yourself. Is that true? Are you going to live without regrets? Are you going to know your worth? I hope so. Living in this house, I hope you're going to learn a lot of lessons from me. So that's why I'm here each week. That's why I'm, you know, I spend so much money making these YouTube videos on my channel a couple times a week. So much money in editing that so far I've never seen back from YouTube. It's my ministry of sorts so that I can help you guys not make the same mistakes that I made. Right? For you guys to discover your value and know your worth so you can go for your dreams without holding back, without excuses, without feeling like you're not enough because you are enough for your goals and dreams and purpose. You are not only enough, you are exactly who you are supposed to be. You have the exact gifts, skills, talents, and smarts that are good enough for where you're going. And you look fine. Your looks are perfect for your calling. So what does that say to you guys? Jordan is saying, yes, Captain, you have a whisper in your voice. <laughs> I wasn't sure for a sec. Yeah, because <clears throat> I've been coughing a lot. Up coughing, I have a sore throat. But I thought, I missed you guys last week. I didn't want to miss you guys again. All right. Um, Nicola asks what PJs Eli's wearing there. Baby Yoda, Star Wars. All right, we're gonna get through this even if I'm coughing. Okay, Derek asks, and thank you for the gift, what should I do to prosper as much as you do? You know, the Bible is our handbook on how to prosper. I think it's in Joshua, Old Testament, Joshua 1.8, where they talk about when you have the word of God with you and using it and being obedient to it at all times, you will prosper in everything that you do. So living by the word, I would say, is the number one way to prosper. All right, let's get to your guys' comments. Nana says, it was definitely true for me, but I am counting on the scripture that says he will restore the years the locust has eaten. Yeah, because if we look back at all our missed opportunities, places where we blew it, we could just sit in a pit and cry. But thank God that he promises, not only will he restore the years the canker worm has eaten, but that our latter years will be better than our former years. So we don't have to feel bad about what, what's transpired, where we've messed up, or where we've fallen short, because it can get better from here. And God can make sure... The rest of our life 
is the best of our life. Uh, what's it? Is it Ka Khalid from Instagram? Hi, how are you? Uh, unknown ball legend said, I wish I left college a long time ago. Now it says, you're so right. It doesn't matter who else believes in you and who else thinks this about you. If you don't think it about yourself, you can't live the life God wants you to have. That's so true. And that's why I so encourage everyone, hi Elena, to get so familiar with the scriptures, get so familiar with the Bible that you know your worth, your value, how to have success, how to prosper, who you are, because it's in there. Hold that thought one second, I need to go blow my nose. I'll be right back. On this topic, oh, let me see what I missed while I was gone. If you guys put some comments in. You know, um, Jelana's out of town, and I was supposed to work with Shantae yesterday, but <clears throat> I had to cancel that shoot because I was coughing and not feeling well, so I did not work with her yesterday like I was supposed to. Um... They were shooting something, um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say. Maybe it's top secret. <laughs> it's top secret, but it had to do it had to do with the fans. There was some kind of fan opportunity. I was gonna get to meet some of the fans, but I was like, <clears throat> I don't wanna get anybody sick, so I stayed home. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at your comments now. Thea says, what do you like about working with Jessica Ruth Bell? Well, she's a committed actor. She's definitely committed to her work. Um, and she has a nice ease and lightness about her. She's very sure of herself. And I, I was even commenting to her. I was like, wow, I wish I had your level of confidence when I was your age. I would be just in a completely different place if I knew my value and my worth. And hey, that's so on point because that's our topic for today, right? Hi, Jarrell. Okay, let's see, Jordan says, I know that she has done other Darman videos besides one for See Me. That was the one that really stands out. Did any other Darman actors come to your house besides Shantae and Giovanna? Um, an old, someone who used to do Darman comes to my house. Uh, you guys remember Nick? Sarando? He comes to my house. He helped me film my You Are Worthy course. And he's now helping me film the acting course I'm putting together. So. Uh, hi, Paget. We've got Russell here. Good morning. Donald says, I think back that Moses thought that he was not good enough, but God did. Even when Moses was disobedient, God was with him. If we have faith in ourselves and trust in God, we will not go wrong. Yeah, Moses had big confidence issues. God told him, go speak to Pharaoh, and he had all these excuses. I can't. I'm not good enough. I'm this. I'm that. I, I have a stutter, you know. It's, you know, all these excuses. And I'm sure God was like, oh, you are good enough. You are worthy enough. You have everything it takes. And we get like that. God was telling me to write a book for so many years before I actually did it. Before I actually did it. So 
it's 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 amazing. It's amazing where we could be, but I'm I'm also I I don't want this episode to be a downer. Right? I don't want it to be like, wow, look where you could have been. You could have been a big successful movie star, Catherine, if you just had believed in yourself and not shot yourself on the foot and pulled back from opportunities. I was going to say shrieked back, but I don't know if that's the proper word. Pulled back from opportunities. You know, it doesn't matter what could have been or where I would have been because at the time I didn't have the strength of character and the emotional intelligence to be able to sustain that level. So I know that for me now, if if I had blown up and gotten big back 10 years ago when I thought I should have, I would be a wreck. I might, it would not be a good place. And here's the thing. Yes, it's about confidence, but it's also, you know, <coughs> just a sec. <coughs> Nana, the moderator, her and I used to go to the same church. That's where we met. We kind of connected because we're both poets. But our pastor used to say, only your character can keep you where your anointing takes you. So we have all been anointed by God, right? God has put special gifts and talents and abilities in us. He has anointed us to do certain things, to go out into the world, to make a difference, make a difference in people's lives. But if we don't have that firm foundation, that emotional intelligence, that place where our character is strong, then we can fall for the temptations that come at that level. What kind of temptations? Well, I'm sure it's different for everyone, but on the Hollywood level, temp well, there's a lot of temptations. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get into it. But different levels, as they say, different levels require, not require, yeah, they require a, a deeper rooting, a deeper faith. The, the places you're going, the places where God can take you further are going to require more of a foundation, deeper roots, because the winds blow stronger there. The winds blow stronger. The things, you know, the levels of little demons coming after you at this level is, you know, sometimes hard for you to handle, but the bigger up you go, the higher up you go, the worse the temptations are. So, God's not going to take you to a, you may go, God, I've been praying for this thing to happen for years. I've been praying for you to take me to this next level. But he's not going to take you somewhere you're going to get crushed, right? So God doesn't only know the end from the beginning, the future, all that kind of stuff. He probably knows all of the infinite possibilities of what it would happen and how it would turn out if you made certain decisions if you took a left here instead of a right, all the po if you said yes to that girl and no to that girl that you wanted, like if you had that baby or didn't have it, it's it's whole different lives and scenarios. I think there was a movie made once called Sideways. I think that's what it was called. And it was like alternate realities. Maybe you've seen movies where it's two different people, but they make one makes one decision and one makes another, and their life turns out totally different because of that. Hold on a sec. I'm just gonna blow my nose again. <clears throat> okay. All right, pa Page it says, Catherine, I'm a Muslim girl that lives in Oman and people say that my God isn't real. I make this comment get wait isn't real should I make this comment get me you know 
you have to know for yourself what you believe and what you don't believe. And you can't let the opinions of others sway you. You can't let the opinions of others turn you one way. When you pray to God, what do you feel him tell you? What do you feel him say? And do you know that you know that you know God on a deep and personal level? A lot of people, like say when they graduate high school and they go to college, they have a different, a lot of them fall away from their faith or their religion because they see all these people with all these different religions and they're being taught to think differently, to have a different sort of cognitive reasoning. When they lived at home and they lived in their parents' house, their parents taught them what to believe, their parents brought them to church, and now they're out and they're on their own and they're figuring out for themselves. Is this something I believe for me? And that's, you know, something that a lot of a lot of people go through. So when people tell you that your God isn't real, what do you do? How do you react when you pray? Do you feel like you're hearing from God? Is he answering you? Or when they tell you your God isn't real, does it hurt because there's a glimmer of it rings true for you? Are you feeling like, I wonder if they're right? And you're starting to have a crisis of faith. You know, these are things you need to dig deep and search for. You have to have a relationship with God because you have a relationship with God. Not because I was brought up this way and this is the way it is and this is the way it goes and I don't really have a say and I'm not totally sure he's there or that this is the God. Do you know what I'm saying? You have to know that you know that you know. And that's what I'm talking about. That deep-rooted that deep rooted faith when I say the winds blow. Because we're always going to have people coming against us saying our God isn't real. No matter what your faith is. No matter what your religion is. So if you're feeling within you that maybe there's some kind of a, a glimmer, a spark of something in there that's resonating with you. That they're saying... He's not real. Are you kind of feeling that too? So these are things you need to really start to think about and pray about. And you know what I would do? I would, next time you pray, I would ask God to reveal himself to you. You know, when you go to your prayer time, God, if you're real, I need you to show up in my life and show me who you are make yourself known to me, show, show up in <coughs> signs and wonders. Get, yeah, give me signs. Show, send people my way to speak to me about you, to secure my faith. Because if we're not deeply rooted in that, we'll, you know, we'll fall, we'll crumble. So let me go back and see some of the stuff you guys are saying. All right, can you please interview Aiden Mikis in three questions with Kat? You know, I almost did a couple weeks ago, but then, but then we ran out of time and we had to go back from lunch break and then I didn't see him again. So, all right. Dan says, yes, Catherine, I agree. God knows the future and all infinite possibilities. Nana said, I had to step away for a minute and write down what you just said in my notes about not having the strength of character or emotional intelligence. Good, and I hope you guys take that in because the number one best trait that you need in, in to succeed and get ahead in life, like a trait that you need, is emotional intelligence. <laughs> With that, you can conquer anything. That is more important than being smart. That is more important than having a massive degree. That is more important than looking like a supermodel, that is more important than being able to lift 600 pounds and be super strong, right? It's, it's everything. There's, you know, you, you find 
famous, gorgeous movie stars, as well as big, powerful heads of corporations, throwing fits. Something doesn't go right, and they're throwing fits. They're throwing fits on set. They're becoming divas. They're anger issues. Their employees are cowering, and they're scared because they don't have emotional intelligence. It, it doesn't matter how... It doesn't matter how smart or handsome you are, people get a reputation. There are certain actresses in Hollywood over the years, men too, that have gotten reputations for being a monster person to work with, hard to deal with, because of their a lack of emotional intelligence. They're, you know, they, they can't handle stress, and so they take it out on everybody else. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me get back to what you guys are saying. Nicola wants to know how you cope with a mental breakdown. You know what, that is a fully loaded question and I would, I would definitely recommend you speak to a therapist or a counselor or your parents or somebody about that because that could go so deep on so many levels and I would need to know so much more to be able to answer that question. How about you, the situation, your past, what happened, what, you know, what's, what your trigger is, it's, it's so much. But I would say, make sure you're praying a lot and asking God what to do. Nana says, bigger levels, bigger devils. Yeah. And he, they say, at each new level, you meet a bigger devil. And, but at each new level, you also have a deeper rooted faith or you wouldn't have gotten to that level. See, and a lot of people are like, I've been praying for years for God to move me here and do this and that. And you think you're waiting for God, but you're not. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to, number one, be obedient. Number two, have the emotional intelligence and the faith without doubt to get to that next level. To have the spiritual foundation to be able to sustain the battles that are coming at that level. If you could, and this is hard, I'm gonna say something that's hard for you to hear. If you could handle the next level, you'd already be there. Ouch, ouch, right? That one's like, thanks a lot, Catherine. If you could handle the next level, you'd be there. God is waiting for you to get your poop in a group, to get your act together, to quit wavering back and forth. I trust God, I don't trust God. Is he gonna do it? Am I gonna fail? Is this not gonna turn out? Am I not gonna make it? I want this so bad, but it's not coming. Why is it taking so long? Scripture is clear, both Old and New Testament, that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What are you vacillating back and forth on? It was in the Old Testament there was a story. I forget which prophet, which man of God it was having to do with. But they were, they were going back and forth on whether they should serve Baal, the false god, or whether they should serve the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? The one true God. And find, like, the preacher, the... The priest, the rabbi, I'm not sure exactly what his status was, was just like, finally he just got so fed up. And it was like, if the Lord is God, follow him. If he's not God, then don't follow him. Basically, you got to do what's in your heart. I say this to you, to the Muslim girl asking the question too, or guy, I don't know, sorry. You've got to... You got to know within you and you got to know for sure, basically. You got to know for sure within you. All right, let's see. In my, Jordan says, in my opinion, Muhammad is real and there is not one God. In my opinion, there are many gods. See, you, everyone's going to have their own opinion. And you can't be shaken or waver if someone tries to say different. You know, you guys are all going to stand before God one day and you're going to be responsible for yourself, your life, your walk with God, and your relationship with God. And 
And when he asks you, hey, how come you didn't believe or how come you believe whatever, you're not going to be able to blame it on somebody else. Well, so-and-so said you weren't real, so I did. That's why it's very important for whatever you guys believe and for you to pray to every day. Ask God to show himself. Ask him to be real. Ask him to show up in your life. You don't, you know, you get to the end one day, you want to make sure you made the right decision. Uh, hey, CJ, we've got Miss Motivation. She was like, she's a cold, I have a cold too, can you tell? Hi, Nicola. All right. Derek says, how can I make as much money as you without it affecting my social security? I don't know the answer to that question because I've not been on social security. And we have two completely different lives. What I do is completely different than what you do. So it's, I don't even know like how I would answer that question. All right, Dan says, Catherine, were you, an ever, were you ever an unloving person? Because I used to be, I'm, and I made me very depressed. Now I'm loving and all depression has fleed from my life. That's beautiful. Yes, I was an unloving person because I didn't love myself. And when I didn't love myself, I talk about this in my You Are Worthy course and the book coming out. When you don't love yourself, how can you love others? Right? Because what we do is a reflection. Everything, the way we treat other people is often a reflection of how we treat ourselves. That's why when even when people are mean and nasty to you and they put you down and they hurt you, and they purposely do things to sabotage you, I say you gotta feel compassion for them and you gotta pray for them. Because if they're mean and nasty to you, first of all, they're mean and nasty to themselves. That's true. We are kind of mirrors, right? Sometimes someone will look at you and they'll hate things in you that they hate about themselves. Oh, Karen and Dusty are here. Welcome, welcome. I was thinking about you guys this morning. I was like, I wonder if Karen and Dusty are going to join today. <laughs> but yeah, people, we're mirrors. People are mirrors. So a lot of times you're getting, they're putting out what they're giving to themselves. So it's easy to, well, maybe it's not easy. But that kind of thing used to hurt me and used to upset me when people would treat me bad. And now I'm like, wow, they must be really hurting. You know, sometimes I'm not feeling that in the moment. Sometimes I'm like angry in the moment and want to like tear their head off. But then I go home and think about it and I pray about it. I start journaling and God's like, yeah, look at, look at, they're miserable. Have some compassion for them. They don't, they don't know me like you know me, you know? Delaney says, I'm starting to know my worth. I've gone through a lot of hardships in life, but God sends his toughest angels to fight his biggest battles, and I'm starting to heal. Delaney, that's beautiful. I'm so happy to hear that. It took me a long time to get to this point. Via says, some people out there talk about grades like they are an accessory and how it relates to their self-worth. It doesn't. Do you know what? He, and, there's a lot of people who send me messages saying, like, oh my gosh, I got a terrible grade, or I, 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 didn't, I only got a D, and I'm like, I'm freaking out. People have, a couple times, sent me messages talking about wanting to end their life because they didn't get a good grade. It's ridiculous. It's such a crazy measure. Of, you know, when you finish college, you have a degree on your wall, wherever you hang your degree. A doctor, a lawyer, whatever, an engineer. And when customers come in, they're not, they, they will never ask you, did you always get straight A's on your chemistry? Did you always get straight A's in this class, that class? No. Nobody cares. If you got D's in every single class and you made it through college, you got that degree, the person who's got the degree on their wall and they 
got slid in by the skin of their teeth, all Ds, that diploma doesn't look any different than the diploma from the person who got straight A's. Think about that. They both come out with a diploma and no one will ever know you didn't get perfect grades. So we make things out to be a much bigger deal than we need to. It doesn't matter, right? So I, people just blow things up and make them be just these horrible, terrible things if they don't get perfect grades. So I want you guys to just take it easy on yourself. It's, most things are not that big a deal. All right. Uh, Paget says, thank you. That really helped. Uh, Anna did, I'm good. I'm recovering. <clears throat> Elena's baking a cake for work. Um, okay. Delaney asks, what's your favorite Dharma man lesson? My gosh, I, I don't know. There's so many good ones. I've been like, I watched like four or five episodes last night. It's so good. Have, have, is it just me or have you guys noticed how much better the production value is getting, the scripts are getting, the sets, the, the, the storylines, the, it's just, they've just been just leveling up, stepping it up in so many ways. It's so good. All right, Dan asks, is Shantae a diva? <laughs> no, <laughs> she's not. She's not at all. Don't let her looks fool you. She looks like maybe she could be because she's so gorgeous, but no. She's, she's really down to earth. She's really down home and sweet. Um, okay, Donald, so true, Nana. Each step we get has different demons to tempt our character. <clears throat> all right. Have you met Allison Robertson yet? No, I haven't. Derek, thank you for the gift. He asks again, how can I make as much money as you do? Uh, well, that's something you need to ask God. Something you need to pray about. Have you been praying about it? What do you feel like God's telling me? What, what do you feel like God's telling you to do when you pray about making more money? And are you obedient to the things he's telling you? Have you been researching online? How do I make more money? Well, having it not affect my social security. Have you been doing your research? So, you know, you guys, it's it's up to you to do your research. <clears throat> Let's see. All right. Um, trying to catch up on what you guys are saying. Speaking of people that way, and pure, pure, pure muscle and book, how did you do that wrestling show? <laughs> or do you have muscles? I had muscles at the time. I think they've kind of faded away <laughs> along with COVID. Maybe I'll get them back someday. I don't know. I got to have some motivation to do some push-ups and lift some weights. I can't remember the last time I did a push-up. <laughs> Maybe a year ago. Um... Yeah. Well, I lift my kids up. Does that count? Like Timmy's legs were hurting him the other day and I had to carry him a little ways. And he's a teenager. It's not exactly light. So I think I get my workout just by like having to take care of my kids. All right, we've got, I'll say God saved me. I went through a blackout and was praising him when I woke up. Very cool, unknown ball legend. Hey, Catherine, it's their own self-esteem talking, Joshua says. Yeah, when people are being nasty to you. Hmm. Let's see, Jordan says, I'm still, sh it still shocked me in that live stream. Are you sure that the sale for that woman just punched you and where are you went down? And also, I feel that you are wordy. The book is like your baby at this point. It is my baby because it's my life. It's how I went from feeling worthless to now 
not sabotaging my dreams anymore and going after them. And I want that for you guys. So I'm going to talk about that. You are worthy for like the rest of my life. So you're going to have to get used to it. <laughs> you're going to have to get used to me talking about it. Because I want you guys to have that same freedom as I do. Uh, we've got Nomadski on here today. Um, Paget says, I need to come to your future lives. I hope you do. It's nice to have you here. Uh, okay, let's see. What do you think of, what do you think about who hurt you? What should be done with them? Well, you know what? God's a really big fan of mercy and forgiveness. So I'm starting to become a really big fan of mercy and forgiveness. Probably back in the day, I want, you know, back in the day when I was not as uh, emotionally mature or as spiritually mature, when somebody hurt me, I wanted to like really hurt them back so they could feel the pain that I was feeling, right? This was my chaotic first couple of years of marriage. I had such a low self-esteem that Rob would say something to me that maybe wasn't even meant to be an insult, but I took it that way. And I would get so angry that I would be like screaming at him and yelling at him and putting him down and, and saying all kinds of bad things about him and he wouldn't, he wouldn't be moved. He wouldn't react. He would just be calm. And that would make me more mad. <laughs> so I was like, you, mm, aren't you mad that I said that about you? And he was like, no. <laughs> so I got more mad that he wasn't mad. And then I started like physically attacking him, punching him out and throwing shoes at him. And it was a mess. <laughs> It's a miracle that he stayed with me because I was a disaster. I was an emotional basket case with no self-worth, hated myself, and I couldn't take, I could not take one ounce of feedback or criticism. Now, we're in a, like, I am night and day a different person from how I used to be. Sam Cook is asking if I paint my eyeballs. No. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me today. This is how God made me. This is the eye colors he gave me. I do not have contacts in. I did not get out some paint and paint my eyes. I can show you how different we are. I mean that the amount of growth I've had to do spiritually and emotionally, um, just like two nights ago, we got in an argument and he was really like laying it into me. Not like before when I was talking about where he didn't really say anything that was that bad. I just took it that way. This time he was saying some like, hold me to the fire telling me what I should be doing and and like vehemently like just like mad and upset that I'm not living up to these certain standards and I was just listening to him and, and instead of getting mad instead of reacting instead of yelling back at him instead of like punching him I, was, I just sat there silently and I'm thinking about it I'm like you know he's right I gotta get my act together I gotta do better, you know? And when you can, when you can realize that someone is coming at you, even if you don't like how they're coming at you, but you know they're coming at you from a place of love, they just are so frustrated. They don't know how else to bring you the information because they're so sick of seeing you go in circles or hurt yourself or not live up to your potential and even if they're coming at you yelling or angry it's okay because there might be some truth in what they're saying and I realized yeah he's right what the heck am I doing 
you know, we so in case you guys are wondering, we were getting we were getting in an argument because I was like, oh, and I signed up for this online course and I signed up for this webinar and I'm gonna go to this mastermind and he was like what the heck are you going to all these seminars for I don't think they are helping you because you're only like implementing 10% of what you're learning you need to start doing and not just learning I was funny because that kind of goes with a quote I read yesterday that said if you just are reading, reading, constantly reading, but not taking action on the things you're reading, that it's like mental masturbation. You're like, oh, it feels good. I'm learning so much stuff, but never putting it into practice. And I realized I am so guilty of that. I am so guilty of that. And it's the same with, you know, if you guys end up getting my You Are Worthy book and reading it, if you don't put into practice what I'm talking about. You could read a book on worthiness. You could read a book on worthiness and still feel worthless because you haven't done the work. You haven't implemented. So we have to be not just learners, like I'm an avid learner, but doers and putting it into practice. So let me go back. I think I think you guys have had a lot of comments. I'm going to go back and find them. I don't answer them on the spot because it like breaks my train of thought and then I've never finished a sentence. Okay. Um, some people make not getting good grades a catastrophe, Via says. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas says she's also loving the Darman series, though it's getting darker. About darker but we are touching darker subjects but unfortunately that's real life and a lot of people go through these terrible things uh, you should make a YouTube vid on Darman teachers you were well that's an interesting idea Mi Nicola thank you I'll think about that uh, send me like a reminder <laughs> so I remember when I get off the phone uh, I'm known ball legend. It's how I feel about being successful. You don't need a degree to be successful. Screen Blasters, I see you playing a mother in most of Darman videos. You're very talented. In the last two videos, I played teachers. Two very different videos. Did you guys see the one where I'm accusing the emo girl of being on drugs? I don't know. I feel like whenever I'm a teacher, I'm accusing somebody of being on drugs. <laughs> no, but then the the other one that came out with Adam W. I was like, a flirty teacher. Oh, boy. Um, yes, why did you wear a wig in that episode? I just wanted to change it up. I just wanted a different look. I kind of felt like that teacher would look like that based on how she was acting. Delaney says, uh, oh, that's for Nash. Okay. We've got Herbal, Herbal here. Hi. Dan says, how important do you value self-respect and dignity? Self-respect and dignity. I don't, I'm not sure about the dignity thing, but self-respect, yes, respect yourself. Treat yourself well. Treat yourself the way you'd treat others. Nana says, many successful people never went to college. We've got Jayla Tins. Is that Jayla Tins? Donald says, we should never sweat the small stuff and ask God to help us with the stuff we're having trouble with. Yes. Oh, Alina got Nana's book. Oh, you're going to love it. She did such a good job with that book. Um, huh, we got Oralee here. Let's see. Hold on a sec. Let's see what she said. Oops. Hold on. Where'd that comment go? Did I lose it? I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Okay, Orlie says, to everyone here, listen to Catherine and take her advice. She is the best and she really knows what she's talking about. She has helped me here tremendously and changed my life like nobody would. Oh, that's very kind of you, Orlie. You're the one changing your life, though. Do you know what I'm talking about? When we listen to God and we obey him and we do what he asks us to do, and sometimes God will put people in our lives to help us, encourage us, to mentor us, to help us get to the next level. It's it's so great to have a coach and a mentor. 
Um, for those of you who don't know, I am a life coach. I call myself an encouragement coach because I encourage people to overcome their obstacles to reach their dreams. The thing about coaches is we can see blind spots that you can't see. Like when you're driving down the road, there's certain things that the, the mirrors on the side don't cover where you could be swerving over the next lane and get hit and get creamed and get smacked. Coaches can see your blind spots. They can see things. My coach can see my blind Like I had an epiphany this week. I'm talking to my coach and I'm like, this is what I need to do. I figured it out. This is how... and. She was kind of gently reminding me of something she told me six months ago. <laughs> but I didn't see it at the time. And I didn't take her advice at the time because I didn't understand it at the time. And so, you know what? It'll come to you when it comes to you. But they can see things far into the future that you can't see. <laughs> they have a different perspective. So, um, okay. Let's see what other comments... Um, oh, thank you for the gift, Angela. I appreciate you. Okay. I'm touched by your faith in God. I've always believed that he is always with us, even in the most frustrating times. Yeah, like they say, God doesn't always take you out of the storm, but he's with you through the storm. Um, Nicola's quoting, I think, one of the Dharma videos. Being different is not a bad thing. Uniqueness and who you are makes you powerful. Yeah, B.S. Getting good grades in school will not matter in the grand scheme of things. What's important is that you put in the effort and do the best you can. I totally agree with you. Oh, thank you, Jacqueline. Rachel Christensen is in London. I saw that she was going to London. That's amazing. Um, Screen Blaster says, Catherine has beautiful eyes and a beautiful heart. Thank you. Michael says, you look 20 years younger today. You look 35. <laughs> so you think I'm 55? What? You think I'm way older than I am. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's funny, but it's okay. <laughs> All right. All right, <laughs> you guys are cracking me up today. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, the one you were mad at, Angeli, two years ago when she was poor made me cry. Oh yeah, where's she been? I haven't seen her in forever. I hope she comes back soon. All right, we got people talking about baking. All right, we've got Vivi. Hey, Catherine, I've been having problems with my classmate that I saw as my friends, but I hurt them, and they did the same, but I hurt them on accident. Well, have you gone to talk to them yet? Have you gone to explain to them how sorry you are and how you didn't mean to hurt them and it was an accident? Mommy, try, try going. I have diarrhea. You have diarrhea? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to look at your butt right now. Can you please tell me this? There's a water daddy we on it. Can you please ask um Char to help you? No, I okay. need you. Alright, well uh, maybe have to maybe I'll end this early. Let me see if there's any <laughs> few last questions. Alright. You you got you got your pull up on from your overnight sleep, so you're you're safe. You're not gonna get in on the furniture, so hold on a sec. Uh, Nana says it's like the effectual doers of the word rather than the ineffectual hearers of the word. Yes, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about if you only hear the word of God and you don't do it, it's like looking in the mirror at your face, but then as soon as you go, you forget what you look like. And I, we all have to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. Um, yes, I will, Eli. Lizzie said, I literally wouldn't be where I am today as a person and a mom if it wasn't for you, Catherine. Thank you. You are so sweet. All right, so, um, oh, Vivi, Vivi doesn't want to talk to them anymore because they, they're done. They're all tired of talking about it. It's never made a difference. I'm sorry that happened. I've, I've lost a few friends who refused to talk things out. Hey, Louisa. So I hope this was helpful for you today. I'm going to hop off five minutes early. 
I think I have a little diaper crisis here. So thank God I did not put him in underwear <laughs> last night or we would have a big mess to clean up. All right. Love you guys. I will see you next Sunday. Bye.